Okay, this is a book review called The New Intellectuals by Ayn Rand. And Ayn Rand is a very interesting lady. I think she's the smartest lady who ever lived. Um, she was born in Russia. The communists um, destroyed her father's business. It was very uh, difficult for her family. She saw people all over Russia starving and dying. And then she comes to the United States and in New York she sees the skyscrapers. And she's like, holy crap, what an incredible country this is. How much better and greater than Russia. Um, her best book is Romantic Manifesto. And I've done a book review on that before. And uh, that's my favorite book of hers. It's all about why the 1800s was the greatest century ever in the history of the world for art and literature. Um, and it was a magnificent book. Okay, this book, New Intellectuals, the first half is good. And it's an expression of her theory of objectivism. It's a bit abstract. I think for a young guy who hasn't read a lot of Ayn Rand before, it's fine or for, for a philosophy class. But there's a couple good things in it. So there's good points in it. That's why I'm recommending it. Even though the book overall, the last 100 pages, is just sort of a, a rant that I think is a little boring. But uh, what, what's good about it? She loves Aristotle. She says that Aristotle's philosophy was the intellect's declaration of independence. He's the world's first intellectual in the purest and noblest sense of the word. And that he emphasized a rational view of existence and man's consciousness. So he got away from all the mysticism of Plato. She hates Plato. Plato's kind of a communist at heart. You know, he was so disillusioned by Athens' loss to Sparta that he sort of started to favor Athens' worldview, which is a very collectivist, uh, somewhat miserable existence. And then she talks about not liking force, but that's what... That's what uh, Sparta was all about. Um, anyways, the, the, well, that's Plato. Anyways, getting back to Ayn Rand. She loves Thomas Aquinas. Thomas Aquinas sort of taught the world about Aristotle, and this, she feels, paved the way for the Renaissance. Yeah, Thomas Aquinas was big with the whole scholasticism movement, and in a sense, it's like syncretism. Uh, he incorporated Aristotelian philosophy into Christianity. Um, she also really loves the Founding Fathers, and uh, she says, basically, the things essential for happiness, she would describe them as three things to make the greatest country in the world. She says, you have to have capitalism because it's the best form of economy. And that's obvious. Anybody who's ever studied economics that's honest about it, capitalism gives every person the best possible chance to uh, develop a reasonable amount of wealth. Uh, the Constitution of the United States is the greatest constitution ever written for any country. That's why it's, it's lasted so long. She loves the Founding Fathers, how intellectual they were, how good they were, how noble they were, how they wanted men to, you know, be able to have a opportunity to try to have a good life. Um, one of the things I think is funny, she never, she's an atheist, she's, well, she says she's an atheist. She does not praise God, she does not praise Christianity, but what I find funny about it is the Founding Fathers were 95% devout Christians, and the, the remaining 5% were almost entirely Christians, and many of them would be devout by modern standards. Like they'll try to say Thomas Jefferson wasn't devout. Yeah, right. The guy was a member of Bible studies. He emphasized how he loves to read the Bible every day. He, he insisted on it being taught to all his students um, at the University of Virginia and he, you know, and all his children and relatives. He was very, very, very religious by our modern standards. Um so then also she talks about her favorite authors. I always find this funny. Her favorite author in the history of the world is Victor Hugo, uh, who was a very Christian writer. Look at his books, Les Miserables and The Hunchback in Notre Dame. I mean, um, she says to read Victor Hugo, one has the sense of walking into a cathedral. Uh, she loves Fyodor Dostoevsky, an intensely Christian writer. She loved Quo Vadis by Enrique uh, Sinkovitz, okay? Um, and, and her other writer, tastes are similar to that. Those are like her three big favorites. Um, let's see what else. Here's a nice Ayn Rand quote. She says her slogan is, I am, therefore I will think. And that's, you know, a spoof on Descartes. He said, I think, therefore I am. She's a great promoter of individual rights. She saw how the collectivist movement in Russia destroyed her family. And uh, so she's a big believer. You know, she says the smallest minority is the individual. Uh, so she's a great promoter of individual rights. Um, she does say she thinks man's rights do not come from God, but just because he is a man. And in my opinion, that's wishful thinking. You know, if you don't have the society agreeing on that, then the ruler's probably just going to decide whatever is going to go. And of course, they're going to want all the power to themselves. 
Um, she also talks about don't compromise with uh, communism because she says you'll just be pushed along and end up worse off. Stop supporting your destroyers, she says. Do not cooperate with them. Build a productive life with those people who share your values. Um, do not let the hero in your soul perish. And then the last hundred pages of the book were kind of crazy. She just like goes on and on and on, kind of in my opinion, saying the same thing over and over again about the importance of freedom and individualism in the Constitution and capitalism. And so that's why I can't recommend this book to anybody except sort of a serious student of these topics. But I still like the first 100 pages. They're pretty good. Um, do not expect men to produce when production is punished. Science needs philosophy. If philosophy goes, science will be next to follow. That's where we're at in the modern world. Because philosophy and religion are not respected, science has just become totally corrupt and evil. It's just a corporate uh, system to make money and exploit people. Not entirely, but... Primarily, yeah, it is. Um, she talks about socialism being a return of Attila the Hun, so to speak. Um, and she'll say, no man has the right to force his opinion by physical force. But that's what you know rulers do. <laughs> um, a nice quote by Ayn Rand. Life is figuring out what you want and pursuing it. And she continues, to oppose anything, one needs firm principles. To have firm principles, one needs philosophies. The founding fathers were America's first intellectuals. Their basic premise was a man's right to his own life, to his own liberty, to the pursuit of his own happiness. The founding of the USA was the most noble country that ever existed. The founding fathers were a phenomenon, unprecedented in history. They were thinkers who were also men of action. They proclaimed man's right to the pursuit of happiness. Freedom cannot exist without economic freedom. The greatest economic system was capitalism. And then she talks about creativity, and this is Ayn Rand continuing. The basic need of a creator is independence. The creators live for themselves, and this is the secret of their power. His vision, his strength, his courage, they came from his own spirit. The creators were not selfless. They were self-sufficient, self-motivated, self-generated. And only by living for themselves were they able to achieve the things which are the glory of mankind. Such is the nature of achievement. Okay, and so that's what she loves. She loves that if you just leave people alone and let them achieve on their own terms, they produce far better results than any type of forced labor, collectivism, etc., which is how most countries through the history of the world have been run. Okay, so Ayn Rand continues. Men have been taught that it is a virtue to agree with others, but the Creator is the man who disagrees. Men have been taught that it is a virtue to stand together, but the Creator is the man who stands alone. Every creative job is achieved under the guidance of a single individual thought. Okay, so she goes on and on about how great intellectual achievements have come from ind individual ideas. And I actually think that's true. And you'll hear a lot of other uh, great geniuses say the same thing about that. They figure something out and then they work with a group perhaps to build it, but it's the individual who initially figures things out. Um, the man, Ayn Rand continues, The man who speaks to you of sacrifice speaks of slaves and masters and intends to be the master. The worst guilt is to accept an undeserved guilt. It is your mind that they want you to surrender. Okay, that's Ayn Rand. Okay, then just one last thing she says here, a little bit more about how the USA used to be. She says, our country, the USA, was the noblest country in the history of men, the country of the greatest achievement, greatest prosperity, greatest freedom. In the name of the best within you, do not sacrifice this world to those who are its worst. The world you desired can be won. It exists. It is real. It is possible. But to win requires your total dedication. Ayn Rand. So anyways, she is a wonderful champion of individual rights and of individual achievement and the need of the creative mind for independence um, and free speech and all that. So I like her a lot. Um, and I know she's a little crazy. I know a lot of people think she's a pain in the butt, but um, you can obviously see there's some, there's some good stuff here. And if you really are curious about art and literature, the Romantic Manifesto book by her is, uh, I think, her best one. And she's got other great essays. Uh, gosh, I've, I've read a bunch of her books. I sometimes get them mixed up. I like the, I won't even go into many more. I've talked about her enough already. But uh, um, this concept of Aristotle, freedom, the Constitution, um, 
and capitalism. It's all good stuff. And then I think the secret ingredient, which she refuses to mention, I think is Christianity too, for creating a society where people can be free and everybody can do their own thing and be left alone. So anyways, hope that's interesting or helpful.